Lord Jesus is, is speaking to us in these last verses, uh, 24 through 27, really the main application of the Sermon on the Mount, uh, true profession of faith. Really, uh, you could sum it up as what, what does a, a kingdom citizen do as a, as a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ? Now, it's, it's very simple, actually. Uh, it's not complicated. Uh, the Lord says in verse 24, uh, Therefore, whosoever hearken, heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them. We're, we're to keep the sayings of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you think of that, how, uh, you know, it's not just an a, uh, academic kind of thing. You know, we, we know about the Bible and things like that. Or, or even like we, we were talking uh, last week, uh, uh, Mr. Dawkins uh, admires the Word of God, you know. We, some people admire the Sermon on the Mount and, and, and the, the, the loving teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. They, they think it's really, you know, up there with God and, and um, you know, all these other religious leaders. But no, no, no. That, that's not what we're talking about. When he says, a doer of the sayings of the Lord Jesus. You see, a doer is a student, a disciple, a follower. You see, uh, we, we, are, we, name, we name the name of Christ, and when someone calls you a Christian, what does that mean? Think of that for a minute. Maybe we have to get back to that. Just think. When, God, when someone calls you a Christian, there's a, there's a little Christ, a follower of Christ. Now, we are to be doers of the Word. But also in these verses in uh, chapter 7, uh, we also are builders. You're building your house uh, tonight. You're building your house either on the sand or on the rock, okay? Everybody is a builder, not just carpenters or, or you know, those that do actually that physically, but we're talking about spiritual building. And really, what a good description of one's life accomplishment, good or bad, this house, uh, uh, accomplishment of your life. Uh, will, it, will it stand the trials and testings of time? Will it stand the trials and testings of eternity? When you stand before the Lord, and He examines all. Last time we went to the book of James, I want you to go there again. Uh, there's going to be, uh, we're going to finish up this, Lord willing, and we're going to look at one more application from about a doer of the word. Uh, and James, in the matter of uh, a justifica justification by faith, a faith that justifies, uh, uh, says that uh, faith without works is dead. We'll look at that another time. But I want to continue... Um, looking in the book of James, chapter 1, and uh, notice here in, in verse, uh, uh, verse 21, let's read that, 21 through um, the end of the chapter. James chapter 1, starting in verse 21. Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and uh, superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he withholdeth himself, beholdeth himself, and goes his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continue therein, be being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. If any man among you seem to be religious, and brideth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, his, this man's religion is vain. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction, and to keep himself unspotted from the world. And, and I, I, was, I, was, I was reading that, and I was comparing that uh, to what the Lord Jesus has said thus far. And uh, see how the Word of God, the Bible, is God's preserved, inspired Word. See, there's no contradictions, uh, but reinforcements. I mean, what, what the Lord Jesus says, uh, James says. What the Lord Jesus says, Paul says. Josiah, find out where your mother is, please. And so there's reinforcement, okay? And, uh, you know, like, um, you know, again, this, uh, this man Dawkins, you know, thinking about, uh, you know, how he admires the Word of God as a, as a, as a uh, work of literary masterpiece. And you think about how, how many years that the, 
uh, it took to write the Bible, how many different authors uh, wrote the Bible, and over such a period of time, all that, and we see that there, there is no contradictions, you know. It is the Word of God, and, and each one reinforces each other. And the light, or the simple fact is that we are to be doers of the Word. The true profession, or as James gives us to us in verse 26 and 27, you see, we're going to be a doer of the work. Now let's look for a minute here as uh, we look at these verses, verses 18 through 24, just real quickly in a review, okay? We're going to run through this pretty fast. I'm not going to uh, spend a lot of time. Um, we're looking at a, a general review. You see, verse 18 is the source of all spiritual life, power, and ability. You have to be born of God. You have to be born of God. Verse 18. Of, all, of, a, of his own will begat he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You know, if you're not born again, if you're not born of God, there, there's no way you're going to be a doer of the word. You're not going to bring glory to God. You're not going to obey from the heart, out of love, out of the principle of grace, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Notice here also, with this being born again, there's marks of, of new life in Christ. Okay? 19 and 20. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, for the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. We're going to have a changed tongue. We're going to have, uh, speaking of, uh, of, of humility and meekness and gentleness, uh, not, not anger and wrath, okay? But I'm saying is that when you're born again, you're going, to, you're going to have a different life. Changed life. New life. Verse 21. Uh, Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. You see, um, we, we, you know, it's, 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 it's always a reminder or something that, you know, um, that, that most people will, religious people will say, if you're a Calvinist, uh, you don't believe in evangelism. No, we believe in the instrumentality of the Word of God. We believe in evangelism. We believe that's how God saves people. That's how God sanctifies people. And so here, it, it says the... Uh, Receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. The instrumentality of the word of God. Not only um, was used in bringing you to faith in the Lord Jesus, because verse 18 says this, of his own will begot he us with the word of truth. Okay? But see, but in the same way, we see as the word of God is engrafted into our lives, it's going to make a difference, okay? And that's how God sanctifies us, okay? Uh, we were reading in, uh, in our catechism for the little ones, number 71, it talks about the means of grace or that the Holy Spirit uses to, uh, say, apply the, the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. And in one, the first one is the Word of God. The Word of God is so essential, not only for salvation, but for sanctification. James, even as our Lord Jesus has done, touches on the way of the forgetful hearer. Look at verse 22. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Now again, we've talked a lot about you know, those that just say things, those that say, say, Lord, Lord, okay? Uh, those that say, Lord, we have cast out devils, we've prophesied, we've done all these wonderful works. And, and, and the Lord says... They never, I never knew you. And, and through those verses, not only at the straight gate, but the false prophets and self-deception, James picks it up again. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. Now, uh, these ones are deceived when we think of uh, the misuse of the word. We talk about the forgetful hearer. Um, neglect of the word. A superficial approach to reading or studying uh, the word of God. I mean... Uh, I don't have any problem with, with uh, you know, those schedules where you read so much scripture every day, okay? But I hope that's more, more you do more than that. You know, uh, a chapter a day is, is not really uh, sufficient, is it? But see, these forgetful hearers, they, they glance at the Word of God, and, and they, they, they don't, uh, as we're going to see tonight about the... Uh, the, uh, the door of the work, or the door of the work, they're going to stay there and look. They're going to sit down in the sense. They're going to continue. No, no. Um, and so these ones do not profit. Forgetful hearer does not profit. 
And, uh, and again, it's their approach to the Word of God. Paul says this, and I think this is an important, good word to all of us. He says this in Acts 20, verse 32. It's uh, his li uh, final word to the elders at Ephesus. This is what he says. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all men which are sanctified. That's Acts 20, verse 32. He says, I commend you to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. You see, um, the Word of God, uh, if we approach the Word of God as we should, is, is going to build us up and, and, and strengthen us in the Lord. Now, as we think of this, uh, uh, words here in, uh, or the Scriptures 18 through 29, you see, we looked at general uh, Christian life. You have to be born again. We looked at a defective Christian experience, one who's a forgetful hearer. Now let's look now tonight, a, a doer of the work. Notice what it says there in verse 25, James 1, 25. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, and being, a, and being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Now, just a thought, maybe just a side note. Um, why, why work, not, not, not a doer of the word? Why does James say a doer of the work? Well, what are you going to do with the word, word of God? You see, the word of God, if you're, if, you're, uh, if you're a doer of the word, if you're not just a hearer or a forgetful hearer, you're going to use the word of God and you're going to build, right? Remember the house you were building? Your life? You're going to be building the, this material. And uh, some... Uh, you see, um, there, we're all builders. We're all building a house. You see, some lay a foundation. Some don't. Some build on the foundation as Christians, right? We can go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. three and some, some are building, and this, this is particular, I believe, to ministers, to preachers. You know, they're going to give an account of what uh, they're laying on that foundation that they're building. The foundation is Christ. But you see, wood, hay, and stubble. Well, some of that's, that's some of the material that people are building. Or gold and silver and precious stone. So, I think that's why uh, James is saying, a doer of the work. Is the word, you know, how do you use the word of God uh, uh, to build yourself up, to be strengthened, and, and as you build your house upon the rock, okay, when the trials and testings come, okay, it, it, you, you'll, you'll be, it'll be profitable, and, and the, your house will stay all to the glory of God. There's two warnings here before we go on. First warning is this, and you've heard this before. Take heed to how you hear. Don't take it for granted. Take heed to how you hear. The second warning is take heed to how you build. Take heed to how you build your house. Now, the doer of the work here, um, I looked at two things here. Verse 25, the doer of the work is the ways of a doer of the word. And verses 26 to 27, I think of the works of a doer of the word. The works of the doer of the word. You see, you're going to have, just like the ways of a forgetful hearer, and then since you have the works, or non-works, of a forgetful hearer, you have the ways of the doer of the word, verse 25. Now look at this for a minute. And it's important, there's two words I want to put in your minds. What's important about the doer of the work, or the doer of the word, is content and consumption. <laughs> consumption, what you consume, how you consume it, we'll see that. But the first word is content. See, it's not just how one looks at the word, but what one looks at. Now notice here, for a minute here, in this matter of content. Look at the forgetful hearer for a minute. Uh, in verse 23, For if any, if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass, for he beholdeth himself. Beholdeth himself. You see, and you think about that for a minute. 
uh, he or she is looking in the Word, or uh, they, they're looking in something else, looking at something else, the content. What are you looking at? Well, let me, let me show you what I mean by this. It just says, uh, beholding his natural face in the glass, beholding himself. You see, maybe they're discovering how good he or she is, or how bad she is, or she he is. But the idea to mind that came to my mind is self-admiration. You see, they look in the mirror, and they look in the mirror, and they see themselves. Uh, or maybe it's self-condemnation. The content is important. So does it matter what you read? Well, you could be reading the prosperity gospel. You could be uh, looking into self-esteem gospel. See that? Again, you think of someone looking in the mirror. They're looking at themselves either uh, they need self-esteem or they need to be built up in that sense of, you know, look how good I am, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man. We're all, you know, we've got a spark of deity and divinity in us. We're all good people. We're all going to heaven, you know, and uh, you just need to prop yourself up. Self-help works, kind of. Um, uh, the bookstores are, are filled with these self-help Self-help, you know, you need a little bit more boost in your esteem, boost in this. Uh, you want to be uh, uh, aggressive in sales. You want to, you know, you want to be successful. And most of this is Eastern religion uh, mixed up together. And, uh, but notice here, the content. And so when we come to the content, we have to, we have to ask, so what, what, are, what are these ones reading? What are you reading? Okay. Other than the Word of God. But see, but I, I come to this word consumption. So it doesn't. It does matter what you read, whether it's a prosperity gospel, self-esteem. You know, I remember. Um, I remember. You know, you, you, you get some books. I, I, I get in more trouble reading books <laughs> in, in my past history. You know, in Christian walk. I remember this one book I picked up. It doesn't say in the front of the book J.W.'s. It doesn't say that, but it does say, but the book was from the Seventh-day Adventists. You look at uh, Helen, one of Helen White's books, and then you open up the cover, you don't see, this is, you know, it might have, it might have tipped me off if I saw Seventh-day Adventists in the beginning, but it wasn't. So I read that, and uh, I, I, was dis I, I determined that uh, I should worship on Saturday. So I became a Seventh-day Adventist. I went to their church, I, went, I was a vegetarian. I, and I thought this was all, you know, uh, but notice what, see, it's, it's what I was reading, what I got into, prosperity gospel, self-esteem, social gospel, uh, fatherhood of God or brotherhood of man, uh, we're such noble creatures aspiring to, for noble accomplishment, accomplishments, human wisdom, human in, ingenuity, all that. You see, that's what a lot of Christians are consuming. Well, see, that's what churches do. Okay, they take surveys. What is the needs? Well, we need a yoga class. You know, we need a gym. We need, uh, you know, uh, you know. I remember <laughs> again uh, years ago we were, and it was in San Antonio. I say it's, it's I laugh at it, but it was very pretty serious. You see, uh, when I was in San Antonio, I worked for for this one man, and I did air conditioning and all this. And uh, uh, we would it was carrier dealer, and so we would have different meetings. Uh, programs at the carrier uh, dealership, and so one was a, a salesman pitch, okay, and uh, Billy Wood and I, we just came, we went, we came for the pizza on that one. I mean, he was, uh, you know, hype us up and, and pizzazz, and I mean, he's had pizzazz so many times, he was, he was just like, you know, get you worked up, and, and I said, this is demonic. Let's just go get a cup of coffee and we'll come back, and he was a Jehovah's Witness, and he knew that much, okay. But you see, that's what Christians are being fed. That's what, what you know, uh, sensitivity classes, all these other things. And so we have to be very watchful of what we're consuming. Today's content for most uh, professing Christians are either philosophy, psychology, some form of legalism, ritualism, Judaism, uh, New Age mysticism. Uh, Dr. Silius spoke a lot on that. In Acts 17, and, uh, and even a, a sense of humanism is, is there. All that's mixed up, okay? And that's, that, that's the diet. And so here, um, 
we're, we're talking about the content of the forgetful hearer, but we're also thinking about what, what, what the average Christian consumes and realize that, no, no, we're supposed to, what is what it says there in verse 25, but whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, we could go, but I'll just uh, kind of, uh, just give you the references. You know, Colossians chapter 2. It is, see, the, the book of Colossians is a very important book. And, and the key verse is, 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 is verse, uh, let me read that. Uh, Colossians 1, um, 2.19, I think it is. 2.19. Brother John mentioned it in his prayer time. But it's so important. And not holding the head. Okay? Uh, from which all the body by joints and bands and have nourishment, minister and knit together, increases with the increase of God. You see, Paul says in uh, chapter, uh, chapter 2, verse 4, about uh, be, being beguiled, uh, enticing words, philosophy, psychology, asceticism, legalism, ceremonialism, dietary laws, all these things plus Christ. And the Christian, we're supposed to have both hands on Christ, and He is sufficient. He's enough. Far sufficient enough. It says, all, um, all treasures of wisdom and knowledge is hidden in Him. All the fullness of the Godhead bodily is in Christ. Everything we need is Christ. We, you know, and so we don't need Christ plus. And so, but when we think Christ is not enough, we have to go and consume and read and, and, and digest some of these philosophies, some of these psychologies, some of these legalisms, all these men's things uh, that, that, that turn us aside from Christ. And I believe that's the fault and that's the, the core uh, issue with the forgetful hearer. Now let's, if you would, let's look at, let's leave the forgetful hearer behind, okay? Let's look at the, the content of the doer of the work. Look at verse 25, I mentioned that. James chapter 1, verse 25. Notice the word but there in verse 25. Uh, James is contrasting the forgetful hearer and the doer of the work. But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and kindleth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. The content, well, uh, it's a perfect law of liberty. Again, James says in chapter 2, verse 8, if you, there, if you fulfill the royal law according to the scriptures, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, you will do well. You do well. Now, now James is writing to the twelve tribes of Israel. He, you know, we don't, uh, we don't discredit or cast away the Old Testament, do we? I mean, uh, uh, we, we have the Ten Commandments. I believe the Ten Commandments is, is a revelation of God's uh, person and will. But I also believe that, that we are uh, in the New Testament and we have a greater revelation. Who is that? It's the Lord Jesus. I don't have to look at the Ten Commandments. I, I'm not, you know, like Paul says in Romans 6 and other places, the law is good, it's holy, it's great. It shows us the knowledge of sin. It shows us uh, the perfections of God in the sense of who God, what, if you're going to fellowship with God. But you see, we look at the Lord Jesus tonight. We look, we can, uh, like in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, uh, the veil is gone. We, we can see face to face. We look at the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God we're changed from glory to glory. We are recreated in the image of Christ. In true holiness and righteousness. We've put on the new man. The mind of Christ. And so, I don't... Uh, you know, I, I like uh, Matthew 22, 37 through 40. You know, what is the greatest commandment in the law? Uh, we could go to Romans 13, 8 through 10. It speaks of, you know, uh, the law, fulfilling the law. What is fulfilling the law? If we love our neighbor, we keep the commandments. But see, but also 1 John says this, 1 John 3, 10 through 11. In this the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. For this is the message that we have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. And I think what James is saying here when he says, looking in the perfect law of liberty, John says, the, the commandments of God are not grievous, are they? Not to a born again Christian. Uh, the Lord Jesus says, take upon me my yoke. My yoke is easy, my yoke is light. 
My burden is light. What is he saying? Well, with the, with the power of the Holy Spirit, being a born-again Christian, I'm not saying it's, you know, it's, you know, in a sense, well, it's, we coast, it's easy. No, it's a struggle. We, we, we have indwelling sin. Uh, we have the world, the flesh, the devil. But you see, uh, but in the New Testament, in the New Covenant, uh, God commands us to love each other, and then He gives us God, Holy Spirit, to work in our lives, and He gives us the love, and we work out that love. What He's worked in us, we work out. And so, the content of, of the doer of the Word is, is the Word of God. I mean, that's, the, that's that person, the, the Christian's main diet is the Word of God. You know, uh, you know, Joseph often quotes it, you know, he says, uh, you know, that, that little Bible song, you know, uh, read your Bible, pray every day, and you'll grow, grow, grow. Okay? Neglect your Bible. Don't pray, and you'll shrink, shrink, shrink. Well, there, there's a lot of truth to it. Okay? Now, all the Word of God is profitable. Again, not just the Ten Commandments, nor, 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 nor do we exclude the Ten Commandments. You see, we're, we speak of the law of the spirit of life will lead us into character and conduct. That's the, the whole Sermon on the Mount, in some ways, in the beginning. When you get into the Beatitudes, the Lord is talking about character. He's talking about fruit of the spirit. You see, if you're just concerned about conduct tonight, you're missing the boat. But don't leave out conduct. Okay? It, it's the willingness. It's the will. God looks at the heart. If, if there's love there, uh, we may fall short very much so, and often we fall short of finishing the conduct, don't we? But the will is there. The motive is there. The intent is there. The attitude is right. Oh God, I believe. Help thy mind unbelief. And so, we don't neglect the Word of God, but it's the law of the Spirit of life leads us. But you see, I want you to see here the content it's totally different when we look at the forgetful hearer and the doer of the word. We're never without law. I think Romans, uh, 1 Corinthians 9.21, let me read that. Romans 9.21. To them that are without law, as without law, being not without law to God, but under the law to Christ, that I might gain them that are without law. You see, that's, that's a lot of, uh, seems confusing, but you see, but under the law to Christ. Christ is our lawgiver, he, he's our Lord, our Master, and we submit to Him in love, and He will lead us. And But the content of the forgetful here is different, okay? In, in comparison to what we do at the door of the work. This uh, doesn't mean a doer of the work rejects outside information, does it? I mean, is, is there anything wrong with commentaries? Good commentaries? Uh, good preaching on the, on the radio. Uh, we use language helps. Uh, devotions. Church history. All, all these things. I mean, it can, can be, you know, uh, you know could you imagine? Uh, sometimes I, I think of, uh, you know, what if uh, Thomas, uh, or Thomas Owens, Owens uh, John Owens, you may never have read anything much. He, he has 16 volume set of words. And some of the Puritans, man, they just, unbelievable, okay? Uh, John Owens is, is one of the better ones. I like John Owens. It's not like Jonathan Edwards. Jonathan Edwards, you have to sit down and read the paragraph maybe three or four times, and then finally you may get it. And the print is so small, but the idea, he, he, he's very deep. Could you imagine Jonathan Edwards with Esword, or a laptop? It would be, it, John, John Owens wouldn't have 16 volumes. He would have, wow! But see, th those, those guys put us to shame. They didn't have, you know, they had it here. They memorized it. You see? But you see, there's nothing wrong with uh, outward information, you know, outside information, commentary, stuff like that, um, in the rightful place, you see? But the rule is always what? And I love this verse. Isaiah says this, To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, right here, it is because there is no light in them. That's Isaiah 8.20. It's one of my favorite verses. To the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. 
It's Christ and nothing. Uh, it, is, it is the Word of God. The Word of God is sufficient. It has authority. And when it's taught to us by God, Holy Spirit, through various means, preaching, teaching, personal study, you see, we will be profited. You see, the content for the forgetful hearer and the doer of the work is totally different. Okay? You see, we're looking at the ways of a doer of the work. How, are, how he or she handles the Word of God. Remember that? We're talking about content. Maybe that's the, 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 the uh, type of food, okay? What are you feeding on, okay? Now let's look at this uh, word consumption for a minute. How they consume it. Look at verse 25. James 1, 25. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, there's the content, and continue therein, and being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Notice the two words. Um, looketh and continueth. Uh, it's, it's amazing. It's, it, there's no short, forgetful glance at the word, okay? But it, it, see, this word looketh is to bend beside, this is from Strong's Concordance, to bend besides, to lean over, to peer within, look into, stoop down. That's that word looketh. You know, like when the Lord Jesus says, Behold the fowls of the air. He didn't just say, you know, uh, you know, yeah, there's birds out there. He said, go out there and look at them and examine them. He says, go out and behold the lilies and look at them and examine them. See how gloriously they are arrayed. And, and they're not fretting, they're not uh, anxious, and they're not, you know, sowing and reaping. And God provides for his creation, but God says to him, Jesus, behold, stop. And this is this idea of a look, look at, to bend the sides, lean over, peer within, look into, stop, stoop down. Now maybe this illustration is a, it's kind of funny, but it, between a forgetful hero and a uh, doer of the work, you see, uh, I think the forgetful hero is, is like a fast food drive through junkie. A fast food drive through junkie. Now, I'm not picking on any particular restaurant. I won't mention. Okay, we're not, but, but get, your, get your mind, uh, equate the fast food, a food junkie, with the forgetful hero. Okay? Versus the one that sits down at the family table and just enjoys the meal, and nobody, you know, nobody in a hurry. I think of uh, this one brother in, in Georgia. Uh, his name is Merrill. Merrill. Uh, he's, he's about, oh, he's about this tall. He's about, he, he's pure muscle. Okay? And uh, sometimes we joke about how, the, how did the South ever lose? Well, some people don't believe the South ever lost, but, but for Merrill, man, he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a big, uh, good old boy, you know, as, as they would say in the South. And you would think someone that big, that strong, would wolf down his food, you know. Now he's one of the slowest eaters I've ever seen, and that's to his his uh, commend him. I mean, we'd be at restaurants, and I remember Pastor Dave and others, and and Merrill still eating, just taking the banana, just you know. Uh, maybe he, he was taught, you know, you have to chew your food 20, 30 times. I don't know what it was, but Merrill is a slow eater. He enjoys his food. It doesn't mean he eats a lot, and. Uh, but I love Brother Merrill. I haven't seen him in a long time. But that's the picture I want you to see about the, the, the doer of the work. Now, and uh, years ago, uh, this fast food junkie thing, uh, the forgetful hero, you see, um, I used to work for Chick-fil-A. And back then I, I had a little Dotson pickup truck. It was a four-speed. And uh, sometimes on lunch break, uh, my, my boss would send me over to the warehouse uh, to pick up supplies. And so he says, Tom, do it on your lunch, okay? Okay. So here's a Chick-fil-A sandwich here, uh, some fries here, and a drink there, and I have a stick shift, and I'm driving, okay? How do you eat that and still drive and do four speed, you know, and, you know, you, just, you know 
It's illegal, actually, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but that's how I've done it a few times. I'm going down the road, you know, uh, no hands on the wheel, and, uh, and I'll be shifting, and then I'll take a bite and take a drink, you know. And uh, it's only, uh, I don't, I don't uh, encourage uh, young drivers to do it that way. It's very dangerous, okay? Uh, you can get overconfident. But you see the idea, the illustration that I'm making. You see, that's how some people handle the Word of God. Okay? That quick. Eat here, take a bite, chip, go down. And, uh, and so we have to uh, look, take time, meditate. You know, like uh, many, many uh, Bible writers, and, you know, not just MacArthur, but others, you know, the art of meditation has been lost in the church. The art of meditation. We're not talking about yoga or Eastern religion. We're talking about, you know, I mentioned that yesterday, for example. That's what basically I, I do with Psalm 3 and Psalm 4. You know, I was meditating. I just was go back to that verse again and again and try to memorize it and break it apart and think about it and chew on it slowly and savor every bit that the Lord has to give to me. Okay? That's where you grow. Okay? But you see, not only do we have to look, it says, but whosoever look at, this is the, how we consume the Word of God, okay? We have to look at it, we bend down, we take our time, we peer into it, we examine it. But the next word, notice it says, continueth therein, continueth therein, verse 25. Um, whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein. Again, Strong's gives us this meaning. To stay near, to tarry, be permanent, preserve, abide, continue. You see, and you think about we, you know, the, the forgetful here, he'll he'll he or she just glances at the word and that's all. But you see, no, no, the psalmist says, the, the word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. I mean, you go to Psalm 119 and and how I delight in thy law, thy precepts. You know, why is that? You know, think of that. He's savoring it. He's continuing in it. Colossians 3.16 speaks of, uh, Let the word of God dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual psalms, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Maybe the reason why we don't have the songs and the spiritual songs is because we're thinking on the fast food. <laughs> Or we're thinking about other things. Is Christ plus something else? We're letting our minds be clouded up with all this garbage. Where we should be meditating upon the Word of God. Singing the Word of God. Singing praise to the, word, to the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, that's the idea of this word continue. Look what James says again. James 1.21 Wherefore lay aside all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word. It says it's able to save your soul. You know, it says the word became flesh and dwelt among us. How about the word of God in your life becoming flesh? Is that, that, is that awesome? That's, that's kind of scary. The word of God becoming flesh in your life, meaning that you think like Christ, and you talk like Christ, and you act like Christ, and, it, and the Word of God, you're so filled with the Word of God, it's like the Word of God coming, becoming flesh. And with this um, continuing, we think about, you know, it says uh, to stay near, to tarry, you know, there, there, there's the truth of sound doctrine, uh, healthy theology, staying true to the gospel, Contending for the faith, keeping the faith, living the faith. All those things is this idea of, of continuing, okay? We persevere. So the forgetful here is a fast food junkie. In, in more ways than one, first of all, the content, okay, is junk food. Wish it was just junk food. But, it, it, you know, how many, uh, you know, well... Uh, wish someone was there to tell, tell me not to read that Seven Day Adventist book. Okay? I'm not saying that someone else is to blame. You know, oftentimes I think about what if I was in Peachtree or Mount Pisgah from the very beginning? You see, I, I wouldn't have got into the, the, the faith cult or the charismatic or the Pentecostal circles. Okay? 
Because there would have been pastors and other men that would tell me, Tom, you're walking on, you're, you're eating junk food. Worse than that, this food is going to poison your soul. And maybe even damn your soul. Or maybe even tell you, or make, make it manifest to everybody else that you are not saved. See, God brought me out of those things. But it's so good that, that we have men, brothers and sisters in the Lord, and say, hey, don't, don't, don't eat that junk food. <laughs> don't read those books. Don't play around with Jehovah Witness doctrine. Don't play around with New Age stuff. Don't play around with that stuff. Because it does. The content. And you consume it. But also in this uh, forgetful here, the, 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 uh, how they consume it. Okay? They uh, consume it. It's a glance. And that's it. You see, we're, we're to be a, a doer of the work. We're going to sit down at the king's table. And James says, notice what it says in verse uh, 25. Blessed in his deed. Blessed in his deed. You, you want a spiritual growth? You want to grow? You want to be used of the Lord? There's no instant shortcuts. There isn't. There isn't. You know, you, you go uh, to, to, like, Josiah and others building uh, houses, building these things, you know, and, and, you, and it takes time. It takes perfection. It takes a lot of hard work. It doesn't happen. You know, when you know, are not you going to slap it together? God doesn't do it that way. If you're going to be faithful in big things, you better start learning how to be faithful in small things. If you're going to serve, you think, well, God is going to use me. I'm taking, speaking to young men. Listen, you, you better be saying, well, here I am, Lord. Be the Joshua. Be the uh, Elisha. Get, get, get at the feet of the minister. Get the feet of the deacons. Learn not just how to preach, but learn how to serve. That's what I learned in, in, uh, in uh, Mount Pisgah. I worked with deacons, uh, real good deacons. They, they knew how to work. And, and we have good deacons. I, I saw an eldership. That function. That's, that's sometimes that's impossible. Three men getting together. I mean, you know, you think about that for a minute. That, that's, that's, that's amazing. And then uh, you see a church that functions. But you see, that's why they're blessed in the deed. They were out to read the word of God. The content was good and they consumed it, meaning they savored it, they continued in it, they looked into it, and, and it became part of their lives. That's what we need. Let me close here, real quick. Verse 26 and 27. We talk about the ways of the doer of the work. Now, just a few things on the work. Look what it says there in verse 26 and 27. James 1. If any man among you seem to be religious, and rideth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction, and to keep himself unspotted from the world. I mean, it's, uh, well, Lord willing, we'll look at this next step in the sense of uh, uh, when the Lord says, He that keepeth the, the sayings of mine, a doer of the word, okay, who's building their house upon the rock, okay. Uh, see, there are some that say there's, there's nothing you have to do to get to be saved, okay? And after you're saved, there's nothing you have to do either. Well, that goes against this. The Lord says, you must be the, a doer of my sayings. You must do uh, uh, the Word of God. You must obey. And the evidence of salvation is obedience. And, and so those that, that teach that are wrong, but James is teaching, hey, you know, you call yourself religious? Okay? Do you bridle with your tongue? See, that's an evidence, a manifestation. Just one. Okay, there are many. You can think of many manifestations. Uh, the Lord says, Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Here, uh, verse 26, I think of it as, as a negative. Okay? Vain, empty experience. Okay? James has more to say about the tongue, for sure. Chapter 3. But the, but the issue is, many can talk to talk, but don't walk the walk. And James says they're just religious. Worse than that, he said they're vain religious. Okay? Vain religious. Let me ask you, again, what do you talk about? What, is, what are some of your communications? How do you pass the time? Foolish, uh, coarse jesting? Maybe the news of the world? Gossip? And notice it says, uh, 
he says uh, in verse 20, For if a man among you seem to be religious and brides not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this, this man's uh, religion is vain. You notice it, they're deceived. Okay? Deceived. And this is again what James is repeating what our Lord has already said about many that say, say, okay, but they don't do. They'll try to say the right things, but there's no works to follow. There's no fruit of repentance. There's no spiritual life. There's nothing to back them up. They say they have Christ. They made a confession. They made a profession. But see, dear ones, uh, the Lord says, if they're not doers of the word, or if they're not doings of my sayings, if they're not following Christ, again, uh, it's going to be out of a new heart. The power of the Holy Spirit. They're going to be, see, I, I mean, I for sure am not perfect, but I'm not what I used to be. God's still working on me. God's still working on you. There should be spiritual growth. And one area, James says, is that we should have control over our tongue. Look at verse 27. In this matter of the, the, uh, the works of a doer of the work. Uh, pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this. To visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. You see, uh, true Christianity is not just a bunch of don'ts and do's and all that. Notice it says pure, undefiled religion. Wow. <laughs> Could we use some of that today? Pure and undefiled religion, which is acceptable to God, the Father. And, uh, and it's always through the Lord Jesus. You know, acceptable, pure and undefiled religion. And, and uh, notice how this religion is, is uh, manifested. And it's a vital manifestation. It's, uh, it, it, you know, again, James said, you're born of God. Uh, you're born of the Word of God. Uh, you're going to start manifesting that new life, that new creature. Uh, you're going to put off the old man. You're going to put on the new man. It's called sanctification, growing in grace and the knowledge of the Lord. And, uh, and, and James puts it in, in this way. First of all, you're gonna, in verse 27, it's going to be a holy life. Number two, it's going to be practical benevolence. Practical benevolence. You see, uh, if, if you've been showed mercy, won't you show mercy to others? If you've been forgiven, won't you show forgiveness to others? If you've been showed love, won't you love others? That's what James is saying. You see, um, no, you know, he, James is not talking about hypocrites. He's talking about those that are doing the, doing the work, doing the work. Notice also, a doer of the word is like what Titus says. Titus chapter 2, 11 through 12. And we could, we could uh, do a lot of messages on worldliness and try to define it. That would be the hardest, don't you think? What is worldliness? But James says true religion keeps one unspotted from the world. Unspotted from the world. <coughs> Titus 2, verse 11 and 12. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. Now think of this for a minute. Those that profess to be Christians, those that say they know Christ, those that say they're going to heaven, they've been taught, they, they, the, the grace, grace upon their lips, they speak of all that, but when you look at their lives, and I'm not trying to be critical. You see, Lord Jesus says, you know, take heed to what you hear. Take heed to how to build. But he's saying, you know, in, in that last part of chapter 7, he says, there are deceptions. You're going to be on the false gate. You know, there's false prophets. There's self-deception. Take heed that you be not deceived. Beware. And there, you know, the, the, the harlotins and, and the false prophets and all that's out there today, young people, listen, they're out to destroy you. That's Satan's reign. Satan's uh, goal. But notice, when grace appears, and you receive that grace, look what Titus says in verse 12. Teaching us that, what? Denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly, in this present world. No, when we all get to heaven, no, in this present world. In this present world. See, that's what James is saying. Pure religion and undefiled before God 
and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. You see, you're going to be a doer of the work. You're going to be a doer of the work if you are a Christian. Okay? It says some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. You're going to, your good works are there. You've been ordained to walk in them. You're, you're, you know, the Lord Jesus says not only, He says, uh, uh, what it says, uh, uh, greater works than the needs that I've done you're going to do. I believe that's in the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm, I don't believe that's miracles and signs and wonders and all that. I, I, I believe loving and obeying the Word of God as Christ would love. So let me ask you this, this evening. Are you a doer of the work? Or are you a forgetful hearer? Are you a wise man or a foolish man? I could say a wise woman or a foolish woman. All of us are building a house. Our life on something, we're building it. Whether it's sand, and that could be human opinion, philosophy, vain religion, human achievement. We could go on and on and on and on. Or are you building your house on the rock, upon Christ? Uh, the solid rock I stand, like Josiah was saying, the rock of ages cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. You see, are we a doer of the sayings? See, that's the whole issue. The Lord Jesus said, He that keepeth my sayings. That's the rock. Okay, that's the foundation he's talking about. Are we a doer of the word? True profession, pure religion versus vain religion. The Lord Jesus says this. And why call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Do you have an answer for that? Do you have an answer for that? You can only, if, if your, your conscience is good, and you can say, Lord, I, I'm walking in the light as much as possible that I know. You know, my conscience is clear, Lord. I, I, you know, Lord, I am not one like that says, Lord, Lord, and then do my own thing. Three crosses, they, they say there's nothing you have to do uh, to get saved, it's faith alone, no changed life, no repentance, no commitment, no lordship, that's a lie, that's a lie. Then there are those that say after you're saved, you don't have to have good works, you don't have to be a changed person, you don't have to have holiness, you just you lose your rewards. And every time you lose your assurance, you just prop yourself up with a few verses. No, no. That kind of religion won't get you to heaven. And so, think about it. The content. The content. What you read. What you digest. What you, you know, consume. Okay? And how you consume it. The ways and works of a doer of the work. Are you one of these ones? A doer of the work? Forgetful here. Wow. May the Lord bless. May it like, like James says here in verse 25. But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continue therein, he being not a forgetful here, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. This man shall be blessed in his deed. That's what we want for God's glory. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this time. Lord, help us as we, very practical in a way, how we handle the Word of God, uh, the content of our reading, what we read, what we listen to. Uh, let, us not, let it not be junk food, things that will not profit our soul, but let it be the Word of God. Father, help us as we think about consuming, you meant a crude word for it, but as we sit and feed upon the bread of heaven, as we study the Word of God, may we be continual in it, may we look, may we sit down and dine, instead of a fast food junkie going, you know, going through the drive-thru, getting a little bit of verses, get a little word, and that's it. Lord, no wonder the people of God are starving, so uh, undernourished. Lord, give us grace. Lord, it's not because of uh, any fault in you this night. You've given us the Word, you've given us the Holy Spirit, you've given us uh, the Lord Jesus to intercede, you've given us gifted men. Uh, Lord, we're, in a sense, uh, 
drowning or, 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 or tripping over all the commentaries, all the Bibles, all the spiritual helps, all the uh, uh, literature from history. We have, it's all at our disposal. <coughs> and uh, Lord, we, we're, we seem to be anemic. So Lord, help us. Help us on not only the content, but how we consume the Word of God. Let us be doers. And let it be so that it would be uh, applied and uh, come forth in our lives for the glory and honor of the Lord Jesus. That we might grow in grace and knowledge of our God. That the Word of God would be grafted. That's able to save our souls, able to sanctify our souls. And Lord, that we might do those things that are pleasing in your sight. That's what we want, Father. We thank you for this uh, time. We thank you for your mercy. Bless now and pray, Father. In Jesus' precious name.